365 days a year, we are concerned about our brothers and our sisters, and we declare and decree that this city will be made better because of efforts like this. So we thank you for this food we're about to eat, for the nursing of our bodies, for the hands that have prepared this food. We thank you right now. We consider it done. And amen. Good food, good meat, good God. Let's eat. South Memphis, 1417 Elvis Presley Boulevard, and I actually came to just blow the leaves off uh, before their food giveaway before Thanksgiving, and man, was I blessed. Uh, there's just a spirit of, of love was just permeated the entire event. People came from all over, over the place, and uh, there was no judgment. There was no, uh, you you took too much, or you didn't stand in this way or that way, none of that. It was simply love uh, and just cheer and a pure heart of giving. There they are, husband and wife, they own the juice bar there. Uh, they've even done uh, hot meals for folk who were just uh, affected by the power outages. So, uh, man, this is something they've been doing for a while and I salute them and I salute you. Welcome in to Mad Talk with me, Michael Adrian Davis. Thanks for hanging out today. We've got a great show lined up for you today, man. We're gonna see a living legend that I just stumbled upon. My son and I were out uh, perusing and driving around North Memphis. I was kind of taking them down memory lane and uh, we stumbled upon Mr. Warren Lewis. That is tonight's focus guest, and uh, it's gonna be amazing when you kind of see and hear this story uh, right here in the city of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, his technique of cutting hair has taken him all over the world. We'll see that coming up in just a moment. We'll also get a chance, I had a, a chance to host the uh, sneaker ball uh, in the city of Memphis over at the University of Memphis. And uh, we're going to tell you about that whole uh, event and that effort in another show. But I'm going to let you see a clip from uh, Stephanie uh, Love, the board member for Shelby County Schools. Her comments uh, during the panel discussion. We'll uh, get a little peek into that. All right, a couple of headline things people uh, may be talking about. Of course, uh, calls from Verizon Wireless uh, users were not actually connecting to um, the dispatchers in the emergency um, situations. Uh, but law enforcement, uh, multiple agencies have reported that, but uh, police in Bartlett and Carneyville are aware of the situation and hopefully it is uh, being taken care of even as we speak. Also, uh, of course, it's the season for love and whenever you're viewing this, love is always appropriate. But uh, man, uh, they the headline read, uh, I think $16 million worth of fake uh, designer stuff. But it really, that was based on if it was real. So, you know what I'm talking about, but it wasn't real. So it's probably about $1,000 worth of stuff. And uh, actually, the uh, the perpetrators, a uh, couple um, from, I think I want to say, uh, Northernville or somewhere, they simply shipped uh, a shipment through Memphis. Uh, and then, of course, the um, the Border Patrol people then alerted uh, the folk, and then that's how they got confiscated over 9,000 items. Uh, but, uh, man, they say uh, they got Rolex watches and all kind of stuff. And, you know, but uh, they turned it over to Homeland Security and they are continuing to investigate that. But uh, I guess the point is it's going to be hard to get your sweetest and good fake stuff this uh, season. Dina! Anyway, uh, of course, we send a shout out to um, man to the uh, Memphis Urban League Young Professionals. Uh, also, the Black Millennials for Flint and other community partners who came together who provided the box food um, relief for those who were dealing with the power outages during this ice storm. So that's just a, a, a foretaste, a sample of what can happen when we come together as a community and begin to really love on each other and to pool our resources. Consider joining the Fantastic 5000, and that's where I'm looking for 5,000 of you to commit just $20 a month for a year, and we can really change the trajectory of this city. A lot of great things coming down the pike. All right, so we got to send a big shout out to uh, Style Johnson, who was a singer and blues artist whose uh, work actually was sampled by top artists like uh, Kanye West and Jay-Z and, and even Public Enemy. I'm telling you, man, uh, born in Holly Springs, Mississippi, he died at age 85. Uh, he moved to Chicago and, uh, man, performed with folks from Howlin' Wolf to Al Green. Uh, some of his biggest hits were uh, Different Strokes and uh, Is It Because I'm Black? He, of course, Willie Mitchell. 
uh, actually recruited him for uh, High Records or Royal Studios, and uh, he came to uh, record one of his uh, most powerful recordings, a cover tune of Take Me to the River. Ladies and gentlemen, as we get prepared for tonight's Mad Talk with Michael Adrian Davis, let's enjoy a bit of Mr. Style Johnson. It's called Take Me to the River! So it's like a new shotgun, you know what I mean? That's what all the, that's what all the houses is gonna be. Yeah. That's what they like in Nashville. Like they look thin like this, but them just deep. Yeah. Like these little, they'll be three times, four times bigger than these houses. Well, they got that other model coming up. We're gonna see that model. See those a little bigger. Give me this hope. Make a right right here. This is really good. As you can see, this is high school, and uh, from six years old all the way up to, I think, 14 or 15, we lived right here in this uh, only house standing. And this guy was still playing trying to play basketball back then. <laughs> Same dude. Same dude, there you go. You see this house right here, though, to the left? That's the house we grew up in. Go down a little bit, let me get it. And your grandmama had bought me a tape recorder for, uh, for Christmas. Uh, you can go ahead. And uh, before Christmas got here, she lost, she misplaced it in the house. So to this day, <laughs> you know, I was yeah, like, I, in, the house. in the house somewhere. I told the lady, I, I met the lady the other day, I said, man, can I please go to your house look at your wall? Because <laughs> uh, I know it's in there somewhere. <laughs> The unusual technique of cutting hair with fire gets Warren Lewis on every TV show from David Letterman to Jay Leno. Okay, if I want to burn here, I hold it just below it. Don't burn just below it. I need to cut. But the area around his family's Memphis shop is where he's really cutting up. He and entertainer Isaac Hayes founded a self-help group called the Black Knights. Yes, makes his living uh, cutting hair, but not in the usual way. He cuts hair with fire. This is very unusual. Please welcome Warren Lewis. Yes, sir. I'm with. Uh, I have a show, the Michael Agent Davis show. So, so how old were you? Uh, now are you originally from Memphis? Uh, Ace, I should be eight. Well, I'm from a real large family from Mississippi. What we do we kill chicken, rain the neck, and when they kill the chicken, we have hot water. We dip them off in the water. As we pick the feathers off, and be a lot of little fine feathers on them. So we build a fire, or some shucks off a of corn, and burn the feathers off them. That's why you see me burning hair and hold it up. Just like you do chicken. It burns the feathers off a of chicken the same way I got the idea of burning hair. And if I burned hair, it took me all over the world. So you use fire to cut hair? 
Oh yeah. I could have a what? Truck. Is that what that license was for up there we saw? Oh yeah, just that for just a pen. That's a pen on the back of it. Warren Lewis Street. And there you are right there. What year was this, you remember? I've been about 10 years ago. I've been out here about seven. So what are some of the hardest things you had to do as a business owner, man? What did you have to deal with people? Some people's attitudes is awful. You got to, you got to have that stickability to do what I do. Can't be the heck of a fifty cent when I started. I came to Memphis 3rd of December 1951. And I walked in the barber shop and they uh, asked him, did he have an extra barber chair? He said, yeah, I have a chair. Can you cut hair? Yeah. And I, I started from there. I used to have to cut hair by numbers. I cut 50 hairs a day. 50 hairs a day means 25 dollars. But I found out in life, your attitude becomes your attitude. How important is a barber to a community? It's really important because in the barber shop, you got all the information you need. That is true. <laughs> barber shop is a is a is an information center, really. Barber shop is a complete information center. Uh, you can find out anything you want to. It's just listen. That's how I learned what I learned out here in this jungle. I said, you, you know, I'm a people person, don't you, man? <laughs> Bank robbery, anything. You can find out anything you want to do. I got, all I got to do is just listen. Been long than that? 20. It's been a while. Yeah, a long time. I came in the organized, when I organized the Black Knights organization. They flew people in from all over the world to talk to me. I guess they thought I was going to tap things. But my job is to help, not to hate. I got started the youth service. Every day I have a group of kids working. What? My reach used to pay drum with me at Pentecostal Temple. Okay. Who was the pastor over there then? Uh, J.O.? Joe Senior. J.O. Senior, okay. Yep. Wow. And what was, the name, what was the name of that barber school? Motor Bible College on Second. Motor Bible College on Second, right there by where Landscape Brothers was. This antique. This jukebox? 270 here? records on it right now. He played just as good. Mm. I had two of them not long ago. Now he played good. What kind of titles you got on there? You got some barcades on there? Oh, I got uh, barcades. Uh, yeah, all, all, the, all the old stuff. Michael Jackson? Yeah. Okay. Whitney Houston? But I, I happened to be outside at the right time, didn't I? Man, you did for us because we want to get this living history, man, because that's what we're missing, this link that, uh, you know, because we've been kind of fed uh, some stuff that may not have been as true as happened, you know. I've sworn in by three judges, Walter Evans, Jeremy Bates, and Joe, Joe Brown. Everything north of Chelsea, from 2nd Street out down to Manassas North, is Warrenstown. I was sworn in by three judges. Warrenstown, that's right. Mm. You see, they, they put it about 10 years ago, they put my name on the street. Yes, sir. And now, what's, what's your full name? Warren Lewis. Just Warren Lewis. Warren Lewis. Mr. Warren Lewis. Just think about the attitude. You know, his attitude makes a whole lot of difference. It's a lot of barbers and things can cut hair as good as I can on a one-to-one -one basis. But you, it's, it's more than just cutting hair. All right. Not at all. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 50, and 59 and 6, David Ruffin with Temptation, all them guys didn't have no money to get the hair cut. So I cut the hair. And give my clippers. That started in 1951. Wow. Uh-huh. Them what? haircuts I could with that. Yeah. Haircuts with this. Right here? <laughs> yeah. Everybody associated with stacks. Uh -huh. Barcade, old shredded. After they get through recording, they all, all of them would be at my barbershop. All of them. They come up there after they go out to a party or dance and get through recording, they be at the barbershop. Shop before one morning, I had so many people from stacks and everywhere in the shop. The police all over the place. I said, what's wrong? Said, we had so many people up here, we had to check it out. Keep it for me, not you. Because I'm going to heaven after a while. <laughs>
talking to business owners who yeah. never come in the crown, doesn't know what it feels like to have their stomach in their back. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's not going to work. Oh. So, Today's community spotlight is on Miss Ursula Martin and uh, Gerald Spence. They are two persons who uh, bought a grocery store, a brick and mortar store, uh, in the heart of South Memphis, right uh, near Hamilton High School. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, they bought it because they are concerned about changing the trajectory of our community. And they say that this particular uh, store and uh, all of the surroundings has very special meaning uh, in their hearts in the city of Memphis, Tennessee. As a matter of fact, in March, 130 years ago, the uh, People's Grocery uh, uh, launched a national discussion about justice and economics. Uh, it was March of 1892. Uh, a white uh, mob lynched three blacks Thomas Moss, uh, Will Stewart, and Calvin McDowell, who co-owned the store because it was uh, in competition with a nearby white-owned store and uh, for blacks, uh, people in the city of Memphis and all over the place. Uh, this is uh, past and present history, and it shows you the stakes of uh, becoming an entrepreneur and really stepping out on faith and begin to do uh, what you think is needed to be done to really get uh, the economic justice uh, conversation going and not only going, but moving in the right direction. So, uh, man, we salute them on today, and uh, they're going to have uh, fresh produce and even hot food in there, and we're going to feature them on an upcoming show as well. But I definitely wanted to bring light to that during Black History Month. There are so many things that uh, that have happened and transpired in the past to have us to uh, kind of where we are today. And once we can know some of these things, we can unravel them, dismantle them, and begin to move in a more positive direction. All right? All right, it's all good. So we salute them tonight, and we salute you for watching. Well, what I started to burn in hair, I bought his gun just in case a guy jump up. That's why I take care of him with these guns here. See? <laughs> and that's why I started with these guns. I have to keep the guns when I burn somebody's hair. Oh, I see. I see. Basically, so that's you, what it's so all you need about. The guns, okay. Right. Now, the, uh, and, and you always play certain music, only certain um, songs. I, I work by music every day, but especially when I burn hair, I use the music shaft. Use the music shaft. Right. And that's the theme from Shaft. And that's why I read it. Now, he's a bad mother. Shut your mouth, isn't he? All right, let's, uh, let's see how this works. He's going to cut Tane's hair. <laughs> no, you can't really feel the heat on your scalp. I can kind of feel it coming down my face. Wipe his face when you fall out. Yeah. Well, I don't believe this. Now, can you cut any kind of hair? I cut any kind of hair, but you have to do it different. If now, do you get many women come in? Do they get scared right. of long I mean, hair? I can cut it in a procedure like that. It looks like a lot of hair has come off of it. Oh, yeah, right. Well, we are, I'll wash it in a minute. Now, this way here. Oh, there okay. you go. Look at that. <laughs> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Lord, Lord, thank you, sir. Thank you. Very nice. Jeff, you're a brave man. Yeah. I was just 19 when I came to Memphis in 1951. Okay, okay. 48, we left Louisville, Mississippi, moved down to Sunflower, Mississippi. So a lot of my people are still living down there now. Sunflower and Mohead. Did y'all ever uh, have any farming or do any farming? Oh, growing? We picked 40, 50 bales of cotton a day. What? We, and the man would tell us, if y'all work a little harder, you ought to get out of debt next year. I stayed down there three years of Sunflower. Sometimes we would sleep out in the cotton field and the cotton. After picking out all that cotton, we never did get over $140 at the end of the year mm. on a plantation. Yeah, yeah. yeah but see, I, I had, when I got old enough, you just came on up, yeah. Mm. Mm. And life was a little better up here. Yeah, life was a little bit better. Every Presley, I made every Presley. I put the life pieces in his house, the first house he bought on Autumn Avenue off of Park Avenue. Every Presley was living on Park Avenue? I, the first house he bought on, on Autumn. I took my autumn park. Yeah. I worked in that electric company for a while. I worked at electric company and doing hair too. And then I got where I had more customers. I just did hair ever since then. I started the juvenile court. Worked at juvenile court three years. I came back in the community to organize the Black Knights. I had to haze them myself organize Black Knights. We had the food bank. We had youth service. Every day they had me start all this stuff. 
So Deb Day had me start on it, and we had so much food in my barber shop, we had to go down to Bishop Porter Church on Chelsea. When we went down there, and I got so big down there, we had to go to High Park School, High Park School on Tunica. So we opened that big thing up there, and she was giving me truckloads of toys, and people in all the TV station were sent, just like the food bank now, the same food bank now, it was then, but it was on a small, small basin. And, and I remember uh, Bishop Porter, that was uh, uh, Porter, Brandon I mean, Porter's daddy, yeah, right. uh, yeah, all w, w, w something Porter, right? W.L. W. L. Porter. Okay, yeah. That David Porter's brother. Yeah. I mean, David, so David, David Porter supported me getting to church, and then uh, got now, they got the big church on Winchester. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still doing good things, all from people working together, you know? Right, that's all people. Family right. helping each other. And people, we can do a lot of it if we just work together, but it's, gonna, it's kind of difficult sort of, for us to work together. But we can do it. Mm -hmm. But what happened? You can do it on. We had to do it on a small basis, uh, individual. I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be outside. When when people look back over your life, man, what do you what do you want them to remember about you, man? I want the kids to remember that you don't have to get out there and do all these crazy things that they are doing. I got everything I've done, and everything I'm doing is, is to show them that you can. Rise above that. Hadn't, hadn't been any changes in Memphis since I've been here. Only thing I had to do is change me. Take care of myself. If I get myself right, then I can get some help from somebody else. You got to change yourself. Mm. Right. So yeah, if you have hope, you can make it. Now, ain't nobody told me it's going to be easy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Boy, how time flies when you're having fun. That is an amazing story. Mr. Warren Lewis, uh, my mom, uh, speaks highly of him. And uh, she's, of course, uh, just turning 85 or 86. So, man, that legacy still lives on in a lot of people around this Mid-South. We're going to feature her as well on an upcoming show. Don't forget, the uh, North uh, Branch Library uh, has opened a teen uh, innovative center in the library. It's now open. I think it opened on February 5th. So, parents, please uh, stop by there and see what it has to offer. And uh, definitely, I think you'll be blessed. And also, United Way is helping families to file their taxes for absolutely free. If you made less than $58,000 last year, uh, then you qualify. You can call 211 or 1-888-709-0634 uh, to find out the hours and the locations. They've got um, a plethora of locations all throughout the city this year, even mobile units. So uh, get online and find out more about that. Man, I encourage you guys to continue to watch and to be blessed. And I'll see you guys next week for Mad Talk with me, Michael Adrian Davis. I'll see you during the week on the radio. Yes, I am on the radio weekdays from 6 until 10 on uh, 88.5, the voice of Shelby County Schools. It's the Michael Adrian Davis Morning Show. You don't want to miss it. Still the same Michael Adrian Davis, just a different location. So pass the word and tell your friends the real Michael Adrian Davis is back on the air. Y'all have a wonderful, safe, and blessed weekend. Go to MichaelAdrianDavis.com. Enjoy the Fantastic 5000, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.